This video will discuss blackbody radiation and some of the origins of early quantum theory. So to start off, as I said, we're going to look at a few applications, which are some of the initial uh, experiments which led physicists around the early 1900s to think that maybe classical mechanics isn't quite complete. Maybe there's something occurring at very small scales, which is an entirely different type of physics, and that will lead us to uh, the quantum mechanics that we're going to study for the bulk of this course. So the first application is black body radiation. So a black body, we have some object here which is just being heated up and it is emitting radiation at all kinds of frequencies called a black body because it's emitting them at all colors of the visible spectrum. So out of this opening I said we have photons that are coming out, particles of light, and they're hitting a detector at the end. So we have the speed of light equals the wavelength of the light times its frequency, speed of light being about 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, wavelength represented by lambda, and frequency by the Greek letter nu. Looks similar to a V, but if it has a little hook, that's nu nu. Okay, so we wanted to predict what is the spectrum for if I give you the wavelength or the frequency of this light, what, how much intensity, how much light of that specific wavelength or frequency is coming out when I have this black body emitting radiation at a given temperature. So in classical theory, the density of that radiation, rho here, kind of a squiggly P at the end there with a hook being the Greek letter rho, R-H-O. So rho nu of T for a given frequency at a given temperature was 8 pi times the Boltzmann constant Kb times temperature over the speed of light cubed times the frequency nu squared. So this classical theory called the Rayleigh Jeans Law predicted that as the frequency of the light goes up that the amount of it goes up with the square of the frequency. So the classical theory predicted this type of parabola here where I've got this blue dotted line, the classical limit. So this is a problem because it says that as the frequency of the light goes up, you get more and more of the radiation of that frequency. And this is a problem because the energy of the light goes up with its frequency. So the energy of the light is related to its frequency. So this says that there's an infinite amount of light which is infinitely powerful. So if we're heating our black body, we shouldn't be getting an infinite amount of you know, X-rays, gamma rays, cosmic rays, that just doesn't make any sense. You know, we would all, we would all be dead if, if something was emitting some, some radiation of that force. So obviously this is a problem. And this is called the ultraviolet catastrophe. Because as you get beyond the visible wavelengths of light here up into the UV region, you get very, very high predictions for what the density of that radiation is, what the intensity it's putting out. So Max Planck in the year 1900 solved this problem by introducing quantum theory. So we'll discuss later some of the details of, of what goes on in the actual math of it, but the equation that he derived using some idea that maybe the energy levels inside this black box can't be any possible level like classical theory says, maybe there's some quantized set of values which, which it's allowed to have for the energy of the, the particles inside this black body. So when he did that, he got that the density of the radiation at a given temperature was 8 pi times this constant h over speed of light cubed times the frequency cubed divided by the exponential of this constant h times the frequency over Boltzmann constant times temperature minus 1. So that looks like a fairly complicated expression, and it is, so it's plotted over here. What you get is at the lowest temperatures, it goes up initially like the Raleigh Jeans law, but then as you get to higher temperatures, this exponential takes over and it peaks and then it goes down to zero. So this is good because it fixed that behavior. We only emit radiation of finite wavelengths. We're not emitting infinite amounts of infinitely powerful radiation. And as the temperature goes up, we have a temperature down in this denominator in the exponent in our denominator. So at T2, a higher temperature, it goes up and it peaks at a higher frequency. So you're emitting 
higher frequency light, lower wavelength light. And then as the temperature goes up, this peak keeps going further and further up into higher energy light. So what Planck found is that this type of equation matched the experiments for what this experimental intensity was whenever this constant h equal the value 6.626 times 10 to minus 34 joules seconds. And this constant was referred to, you can guess, Planck's constant. So as I said, what Planck assumed is that the energy of the particles inside this black box was quantized. He said that the energy was some integer times Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. So I'm saying that this, this n, this value is an integer, this symbol here, n belongs to this set of integers, z being integers, so n has to be 1, 2, 3, etc. It can't be any value in between. So this was the kind of quantum hypothesis that Planck used, and it solved this problem of the ultraviolet catastrophe and predicted the radiation coming out of this black body. So this was the first application we mentioned where the kind of quantum hypothesis solved a problem in classical physics, and throughout this first chapter here, we'll look at a few more examples of that.